And as counterpoint to Jameson, I wanted to get, I, I got a guy, Robbie Robertson, Robert Robinson. who was a black editor, mm -hmm. and I wanted him to be the, um, the voice of reason mm -hmm. on the newspaper. He really carried the paper. Right. He pacified Jameson. And I also wanted the reader to suspect that Robbie suspected that Peter was Spider-Man. Whereas Jameson was too anything. clouded with rage to ever make that connection right. himself. Again, and, and you'd understand this as well as anybody, by having a family in a strip, mm -hmm. people you know, you know their personality, you know their character, you know, then you know how they would talk, you right. know what they would do, and to use that old cliche, which isn't true, the stories almost write themselves. Exactly. I got a letter once from the um, Office of Health, Education, and Welfare in Washington. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, Mr. Lee, uh, recognizing the influence of your comics, blah, 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 and drugs are a big problem, if you could do an anti-drug anti story, sorry. we'd appreciate it. Well, who am I not to obey the edict of H-E-W? Right. So I did a three-issue uh, series, and it wasn't preachy, but it had to do with a friend of Spidey's, I forget who it was, had taken too much of something. I don't know anything about drugs, so I, right. don't, I just said he, took, he, he overdosed on something. Right. And he was on the edge of the roof and thought he could fly, and Spider-Man rescues him and says, you, you're a jerk for doing that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was part of a bigger story with a villain and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it didn't look like we were preaching. It was just an incident in a story. Mm -hmm. We then had the Comic Code Administration mm -hmm. where they were censoring all the comics. They sent the book back and said, you can't publish this book. I said, we won't put our seal of approval on it. I said, why not? They said, well, you're mentioning drugs. I said, we're not telling kids to take drugs. Right, and I effects. said, I, I was asked to do this by a branch of the federal government. Right. Sorry, you can't do it. Well, it's one time when I was very proud of my publisher. I said, Martin, you know, I want to put these books out anyway. And he said, well, go ahead and do it, Stan. Mm -hmm. And we put them out without the seal. They sold beautifully. We got letters from church groups, parent teachers. And so everybody loved it. Right. And a funny thing happened there, too. The New York Times gave it a good write-up. Now, as you probably know, when the New York Times has a feature story, other papers around the country pick usually up on pick it, up sure. on it. Well, I, I would get clippings from the other papers, but what they would do, so often they would headline their story something like, um, Marvel Comics Drug Issue Causes Controversy. <laughs> right. And in looking at the headline, you would think that we, we were pushing drugs. drugs you know? right. So I learned that there's no good you can do that doesn't turn into something you're embarrassed by later. This is just stuff, I don't know. It's, we didn't have any place to put these things. So it's various collectibles based on characters you've created? Yeah. Is that a, supposed to be a Stan Lee action figure? Yeah, mm -hmm. how about that? And somebody did a bust over there. Mm -hmm. it, it's awful when you're easy to caricature. You know, that kind of worries you a little bit, <laughs> right. but what are you going to do? It's really Joan's world, and you oh, just yeah. live in it. That was me at the Hulk set. Mm -hmm. um, With the, the Thor episode. That's right, it was the Thor episode, yeah. Now, this, the painting over here, the kind of Warholian treatment of an image, where, where did that image first appear? That it's very is, famous, you staring at spider -Man. It first appeared in that painting. Uh -huh. And then what I did, I took a lot of black and white photos of that, just 8 by 10 or so, and I used those if anybody ever wants an autograph shot. photo. Mm -hmm. But I love that. Yeah, it's a great image. Yeah, it's done by a fellow named Steve Kaufman, who used to work for Andy Warhol. Uh -huh and he silk screens these things. It looks like I'm really being tough with Spider-Man, <laughs> <Right. laughs> which Dressing I wouldn't down. dare to be. Over it's, here on the wall, it's a framed uh, Christmas card thing? from Bob Kane. Bob Kane and I were very close friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was a funny guy. He's the exact opposite of me in one respect. Mm -hmm. If I'm out in public and somebody recognizes me, it embarrasses me a little. Right. Bob and I would go out to dinner and when the waiter brought the menu over, the first thing he'd say, do you know who I am? I created Batman. But he was so nice about it. He'd always uh, say to the waiter, come here, I want to draw a sketch. And he'd, on a napkin, he'd do a Batman, an autograph, and give it to everybody he met. You know? right, right. So now years later, you got to do your rendition of his character with the 
the DC Just Imagine mm-hmm. Stanley well, it, creating series. Not really, just my rendition of the name, the name. that he used, because right. it was a totally different... I wouldn't ever try to improve on anything he had done. I just, just did a totally different one. And the idea, the genesis of the project was was what? Who came? Oh, did you go to them or they come to you? No, no, say? no. I would never have dared to right. suggest anything like that. A fellow I know named Mike Usland, who's uh, very intimately connected. Mm-hmm. In fact, he's the one of the one producers. One of the producers of yeah. the Batman series. Right. And he and I have known each other for a long time. And he said, Stan, how would you like to do your version of DC's top characters? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, yeah, fat chance. You know? right. So he said, but if, if you had a chance, would you do it? <laughs> Nobody could turn down a thing like that. Right. Came back a few weeks later. And he said that Jeanette Kahn and Paul Levitz, who were running the company, they thought it would be a great idea and wanted me to do it. And first thing I thought is, what am I getting myself into? So it became a 12-issue uh, set. I've already done 10. I have two more to go. Mm-hmm. And the thing I worried about mostly was fans of the characters. Mm-hmm. You know, wouldn't they resent me having the temerity to say, oh, I'm going to do my own version of it. Right, but they're buying it. it, and they seem to like it, and it's yeah. fun. It was definitely a, a project that garnered a lot of attention, too, when they announced it, because, yeah. the, you know, the, the big to-do of the man who created Marvel, essentially, coming over to D.C. To, to do them justice as well. And the funny thing is, I think a lot of the versions that we did, I think would make good movies. Yeah. Now, they're going to have a big problem. Well, how can we make a movie out of this version when we have the other version? <laughs> right. But I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> right, it's out of your hands. <laughs> You know, I always loved advertising. I always right. wanted to be in the advertising business. Right. And I thought calling us the house of ideas was a good phrase. Calling the Fantastic Four the world's greatest comic <laughs> magazine right. was a good phrase. And make mine Marvel right. wasn't too shabby. Right. You know, all those things. I love I love slogans. Of, of <clears throat> the many things you're remembered for, of creating a, a, a modern mythology that still exists today and will exist forever, for as far as we know. Um, of, of bringing Marvel to where it is today, of uh, giving the world Spider-Man, the Hulk, the X-Men, mm-hmm. Daredevil, the Iron Man, the list goes on and on. Um, one of your, your um, unsung attributes, what I think is uh, wonderful about your personality or the thing that kind of defines you, are the Stanisms, the Nuff said, you know, the oh, yeah. true believer. Um, but probably best well-known is your, your sign-off, Excelsior. Where where does that come from? <laughs> well, the ones you quoted, Nuff said, mm. and then I had face front, mm-hmm. and I, th- these are ways I used to sign my editorials. Mm. I'd say face front, stand, or Nuff said, or hang loose, right. and I had others that I've since forgotten. But I found that s- some of the competitive magazines were starting to use my expressions, right. especially Nuff said. And I, that annoyed me. Mm-hmm. So I said, I've got to come up with an expression that A, they won't know what it means, mm-hmm. and B, they won't know how to spell it. And I thought of Excelsior because it's a, um, it's the slogan for New York State, the mm-hmm. official seal of New York State. But also, I had read that in books of legends. It's an old English expression that means upward and onward to greater glory. Well, what could be better than that? <laughs> Unfortunately, in the dictionary, it has a meaning that they print first. Uh-huh. Excelsior is what they use to stuff packages with. <laughs> you know those shavings? <laughs> right. So a thing won't rattle and get broken? Right. So very often I get letters saying, how come you sign everything with package stuffing? <laughs> and I'd have to write back, read the second definition in the thing. But I love the word. And in fact, it might even be a great way to close this little interview. Give it, it to them. Give if it to them. You know what say, they want. They, you know uh, what they right, want. here we go. Are you ready? Go ahead. Excelsior! <laughs>